Okay, the whole picture surrounding this case won't become clear until we figure that out. Somehow I have to find the truth. Alright, here we go again. More testimonial stuff. Make your arguments. How many bullets do we have? Spotless hammer. Okay, that's easy enough, right? This looks like the obvious place what to bring it up. To kill Hifumi. The spotless hammer, right? Justice hammer three. Maybe justice hammer four. Well, whatever it was, there's one thing we have to figure out. How was the culprit able to move around so freely with the weapon? How did nobody witness them carrying? Sounds like a Justice Hammer 5 is about to make it to Shut up. Check out MurderGear.com for Justice Hammer! Well, one thing seems pretty quick. The murder weapon had to be one of the Justice Hammers! That could be a contradiction as well. Uh, that's about it. So really only two ideas were to make. The very first one and the second to last one. If Ifumi was killed in the repository, right? So if the weapons used to kill both of them were actually similar... What was used to kill Hifumi? Let's try this one first. Justice Hammer 3. It's not that one, so it has to be the second to last one then. Shoot! Even though that obviously answers her question. What was used to kill Hifumi? Justice Hammer 3. Whatever it was, how was the conflict? And what did nobody witness? Blah 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 blah. One thing seems pretty clear. The murder weapon had to be one Shit, oops! Oh shit, I missed. There we go. Ooh, that's a close one. Again, both answer... Both of those statements answers this statement, but whatever. The murder weapon wasn't a justice hammer at all. No, it was something... It seems like it's only one way to do it. Maybe it's because it's due to contradicting or something, rather than answering. So I guess in that mindset... What was the- I'm trying to remember what the second, uh, where I was complaining a lot, said. So maybe it just has to do with contradictions. It doesn't have anything to do with answering questions or whatever. I really- maybe it's because- okay. Yeah, because I've been playing a lot of Phoenix Wright right now, so... I might have gotten those two mixed up or something, who knows. Seriously? A different weapon? Specifically, a hammer from the repository. The killer could have easily used that to kill Hifumi. Now... All the hammers in the repository were covered in flecks of grit and debris. But for some reason, one of them had been scrubbed clean. Huh? And the reason it had been scrubbed clean was most likely because it was used to commit murder. If the hammer got covered in Hifumi blood, of course they'd have to clean it off. I'd also like to point out that the repository has all kinds of hammers. Big ones, small ones, and even some flat mallet-like ones. I think whoever made the Justice Hammers used those as a basis for their design. Alright. If that's true, that would explain the Monokuma Files' note about the wounds being similar. So Hifumi moved Taka's body to the repository, where someone then used a hammer to kill him. Whoever did that is the true killer. The one Hifumi was working with. And the one who betrayed him. Hold on a moment. I still think it's strange to assume someone was working together with him. The way the graduation rule works, there is no benefit to helping someone else carry out a murder. So the idea that anyone would work together like that is simply ludicrous. We talked about this, did we not? We talked about how there would be no reason for anyone to work together. At least that's what we thought at first, but... Alright. That is true. So maybe it's a suicide, who knows? Spotless hammer, really? Okay, but I don't think that, hmm, let's see here. Based on the rules that have been laid out for us, even if more than one person is complicit in the murder, only the one who actually carried out the act can graduate and survive. Assuming the rule holds true, it is simply impossible that two people work together on this. That is how the rule was explained to us. But that Shit. only really applies if there's one murder, right? That is true. In this case, however, there were two murders. Alright, so what was highlighted? Two murders and impossible. Based on the rule... So, obviously, Spotless Hammer is not in the case. Only the one who actually carried out the act can grab... Assuming the rule holds true, it is simply impossible that two people work together on this. That is how the rule was explained to us. But that only really applies if there's one. In this case, however, there were two murders. Shit. 
Okay, so I had to break that purple text real quickly. Okay, so this one seems very easy. It's either... And even if you do get this wrong somehow, it's one to one regardless. So it's either the right one, that's the correct one, and... Oh, oh, thanks, Achievement. <laughs> that is... But that only really Oops. If there's one murder. Alright, here we go. In this case, however, there were two murders. Alright. Two murders. Okay, okay, okay. Based on the rules that have been laid out for us, even if more than one person is only the one who actually carried out the Fuck off! ...can graduate and survive suiting the rule for- There we go. No, it's wrong! It's two murders, so obviously, it's possible for both of them to graduate, uh, assuming this rule set is in place. Since there were two murders, it's at least plausible that more than one person was involved. What do you mean? If there'd only been one murder, then yes. The idea of an accomplice isn't really worth considering. Naturally, if only one person can be saved per murder, an accomplice has no risk versus reward benefit. Risk versus reward benefit? The payoff for working together. The reward that balances out the risk of taking part in a scheme. There's no point in being someone's accomplice if there's no benefit to you. However, if there were some potential mutual reward for the risk, then cooperation becomes possible. You're saying that two people could act as each other's accomplices to commit two separate murders. I think that's what the true killer told Hibumi. They would each have an accomplice for their crime, and based on the case's events, Hifumi would have been the first one to act, murdering Taka. They made him carry out the first murder so he couldn't back out of helping them later on. So in this case, there wasn't one single person committing multiple murders. Instead, each person killed someone, creating two separate incidents. And it only looked like one person because that's how the true killer designed it to look. A single suspicious individual, a similar weapon used in each crime, disappearing bodies. By creating one seamless set of circumstances, they made it look like one person was behind it all. The mastermind picked their target and managed to convince him to go along with their plan. And then, to avoid the no accomplices rule, they simply killed their accomplice. Okay. Which, if true, means that betraying Hifumi was part of the plan from the very beginning. That, that's just awful! How could anyone be so cruel? To be fair though, Hifumi did kill someone, so? if this is true. I can't help but admire its cunning. Still, their choice of accomplice seems... odd. The effort made to convince us the two murders were the same. That was the main characteristic this time. Kyoko must have noticed the fact that very beginning, which is why she said not to look at this as a series of connected events, but entirely separate incidents. Kyoko really is amazing although, when you think about it, she's almost too amazing. Like it's almost unnatural how good she is at this. How an accomplice could be involved. But then, who was the one pulling Hifumi's strings? That's problem numeral uno right now! That's something we really need to fucking discover, huh? The true killer manipulated Hifumi to carry out a murder of actions, and in the end, murdered him. In the debates up till now, the way the case has unfolded, when you consider all that, there's really only one person who seems to fit. Now, I feel like the game wants us to accuse Kyoko right now. Select someone. SELECT ME! That's really the only explanation so far, because I would definitely go for Celeste because of her, all of her suspiciousness. But... I feel like the game wants me to select Hyoko as of now, so let's just try that out. Me? Why are you basing that on? I don't... Okay, so maybe it is Celeste after all! Shoot! Okay, 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 good, good. Alright. True killer manipulated Pifumi to carry out the actions and in the end murdered him. Blah, 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 blah. Okay. Where the fuck's Celeste? Because that's what I was thinking. It's like, okay, maybe the game's trying to trick you or something, but mm, fuck it. Let's go for Celeste Here's right now. So she's the definite culprit, without a doubt. It was Celeste. Ah, uh, so I'm the suspicious individual now, am I? <laughs> I really do hate this kind of joke. A joke? I wonder. So what you are saying, then? is that I specifically chose to work together with Hifumi. I mean, Hifumi is the one that kind of has a crush on you the right now, right? That I would choose to spend any amount of time interacting with him. The fact that he wants to interact with you 
not only that, but the fact that you actually are kind of like the master of his slave, so... Within 10 feet of that shit from brains, that lazy, worthless, goddamn idiot! Oh, showing your true self right now? Just to be clear, there is evidence to support it. Is that so? It is. Throughout the investigation, there was certain behavior that was common only to the two of you. Considering what we've learned so far, it only further proves that the two of you are working together. What is the only- what is that only Hifumi and Celeste had in common? The screaming, encountering the suspicious individual, the paper- no, that's not it. That is true. I got it! So that has to be the it. The behavior they had in common has to do with the suspicious individual in the suit. The only ones who ever actually saw Robo-Justice firsthand were Celeste and Hifumi. Shush, the adults are talking now. What? Sorry. As he said, only Celeste and Hifumi ever laid eyes on the costumed individual. So they both easily could have fortified, uh, uh what's it called? Forge evidence. If we accept that Hifumi was one of the culprits, we can't help but suspect what Celeste has said as well. Are you saying everything they told us was a lie? After taking Hifumi to the nurse's office, we all began our search for this individual, correct? And not too long after that, do you remember what Celeste said? Alright. We headed to the second floor specifically because of what she claimed to have seen. Next, to draw us all to the- <laughs> I like Celeste's portrait for now. She looks like she's just in shock and horror about the situation right now. Or that, or she's just... Celeste. She let out a blood-curdling scream. And when we'd all come to see what was wrong, what was it she said? Yeah, because her behavior is really fucking suspicious. We've been kind of following her in every Once single... Once her job of getting us all up to the physics lab, it was time for her partner to get to work. It was to get us to divide into two groups. So that we would discover both bodies at the same time? In fact, Celeste was precisely the one who proposed that we split up. This is one fucking convoluted plan here. Imagine we had a team of idiots on our side. Thank god we have three smartasses. Well, if Celeste and Hifumi were working together, all those chance events suddenly become connected. And on top of that, that piercing cry of yours early on. That sounded really that fake. Was a signal he threw me, wasn't it? It was your way of telling him, we're on the third floor. Everything's going according to plan. Why else would you let out a scream that could have carried across the sea? I just realized another strange thing. When we found Hifumi in the nurse's office, who we now know was only pretending to be dead. Celeste, you were the first one to say he'd been murdered. To make us think. We wanted to make sure we wouldn't have any doubt in our minds. I... I don't Do you admit it. this? Everything. The whole thing was one big act! Hina, you were with Celeste when Hifumi's body disappeared, right? Yeah. I was feeling kinda sick, so Celeste took me to the bathroom. Wait! Then that was... She wasn't worried about you. She just saw a chance to help Hifumi sneak out of the nurse's office. Each piece isn't much by itself, but start putting them together and the picture gets very ugly indeed. Wouldn't you agree, Celeste? I have no idea what you mean. <laughs> Don't bother trying to deny it. You made one fatal mistake. Oh, did I? I didn't even catch it myself when you first said it. But looking back, I can say that that one little slip up was your undoing. What are you talking about? Do I have to... Am I the first person to actually have to spell this out, or is he actually going to explain this? I'm talking about what you said after Hifumi's body disappeared, and we returned to the nurse's office. I remember. 
remember her saying that too, but I don't understand what's so strange about it. Then pay attention. Sakura, Toko, and I were first to discover Taka's body in the equipment room. Then Makoto showed up and told us Hifumi had been killed. So Sakura and I left with Makoto. Once we were in the hall, we ran into Celeste, and the four of us headed to the nurse's office. Now, the entire time we were together, none of us said anything about Taka being dead. Think about it. Celeste's comment doesn't make sense. It was completely really? out of place. Yeah, I see what you're talking about. So she didn't actually know Taka was murdered really until then. Means. You hear that, Celeste? Oh, he shouldn't Everyone have known until then. Some trouble understanding. Could you repeat what you said? If you're really not the culprit, you shouldn't have any problem repeating it, right? Byakuya said that Celeste's comment doesn't make sense. But well, what is he alluding to? Okay. How long is this fucking trial? Holy shit. Alright, Marco file number three again? Or we obviously seen this evidence a lot. All I said was They must really be enjoying this. Enjoying the sight of us standing around, frightened and confused. They must be positively elated. We are all going to die here. We are going to die. Just like those guys died. And okay. that is all I said. And that's all it takes to finish this. It's obvious, isn't it? What was so strange about Celeste's comment? The fact that she knows the second dead body, I'm guessing? They must really be enjoying, enjoying the sight of us standing around, frightened that they must be. We are all going to die. We are going to die. Just like those guys died. Those guys. That is all I said. And that's all it takes to finish this. It's obvious what was so strange about Celeste's comment. So strange. Okay. When she said that, it should only have known about it should only have known about Hifumi's death. With that in mind. So yeah, the answer's pretty obvious now, isn't it? <laughs> blah, 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 blah. We're all gonna Okay. Here we go. Bam. No, it's wrong. So yeah, she only knows that Hifumi's dead. We ha she has no recollection of Taka dying, so... Those guys, that right. one slip-up. There's no reason Celeste should have said, just like those guys died. When she said that, none of us had told her Taka was dead. So, yeah, you're kind of fucked, Celeste. <laughs> and we didn't run into her until after we were all out in the hall. So there was never any chance for her to have seen his body in the equipment room for herself. So how did you know, Celeste? How did you know more than one person had been killed? And how did you know they were both guys? Because Kyoko had also disappeared, right? So she could have been dead, too. <laughs> you all have such vivid imaginations. You know that? Really? Is this gonna be your last result, pretending to play dumb? Imaginations? You claim that I was lying when I told you about the suspicious person I saw. Then what about the picture I took? Fabricated, obviously. I mean, notice how both of his arms are also on his arms as well. So it's also possible that he used that in order to fabricate so that it looks like he's holding him apart, but really he's actually helping him holding Hifumi apart. So, obvious. Again, accomplice. Some kind of setup, right? Yeah. So let's put the suit on. And then, then she used the camera's timer to... to... Set up the picture. Have you so quickly forgotten? You are the only one who could have possibly fit into that suit. That is also. Plus, I happen to know that this particular camera does not have a timer. In other words, it is an unassailable fact that this is a picture of Hifumi being dragged away. If everything I told you was a lie, how can this picture exist? Simple. Are we sure that's really a picture of the suspect dragging Hifumi away? That could be it too. What do you possibly mean by that? Thanks for answering my my answer. Surely <laughs> Kyoko. There are other explanations than the one you've offered up. No. There is no other explanation. Other explanations. Okay, what's this other explanation we could be talking about? If it wasn't a picture of the suspect dragging Hifumi away. The only other possibility is. <coughs> If Fumi and the suspect are dancing, Hifumi is dragging the suspect away. 
to Fumi and the suspect have been drinking. I got it. This seems to be the only obvious answer, it's not so. A picture of the suspect dragging Hifumi away. I would say it's a picture of Hifumi dragging the suspect away. That's certainly a ah. possibility. Look at that gasp of air for a second. The one being dragged off in that picture isn't Hifumi, but the person in the robot suit. We've simply been led to believe that it's the other way around. So that seems like an obvious answer, right? The costume might only exist to lead us astray even farther. If you saw someone wearing something like that in this situation, of course you'd notice and be suspicious. That's what happened! You put me to sleep and made me out to be the bad guy in all this! <laughs> Such a thing is utterly impossible. Hifumi was dragging him away? Ridiculous, is it? I don't think it's ridiculous at all. Then shut your mouth and allow me to educate you. Alright then, Celeste, being all defensive and shit. Celeste thinks she can prove that there's no way Fumi was dragging the suspect away. But is that really possible? Remember, anything, any evidence you throw up with could be fabricated, so... Just make note of that. Oh my god, okay, that's a lot. <laughs> Robo Justice costume, Robo Justice blueprints, and Yasuke Hero's message. Okay, got it. Alright. What's going on here? In that suit after I passed out. <laughs> then you just draped me across the me and had him carry my weight. You tried to make me look like a bad guy. Like I said, ridiculous. As <gasps> That's the hero's message. One a.m. Perfectly upright. Wait a minute. Inside the suit. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let me see the truth button real quickly. Does it say a time specifically on that picture? Wait a fucking minute. I don't think it's even here. All right, never mind. Was unconscious. There's no way they could stand up straight like that. Then Unless you drag them. Idiot is the culprit after all. No way. What's with the poo hoo hoo hoo? Who the fuck saying that? Who the fuck laughs like poo hoo hoo hoo? All right, anyways, um. Just me up in that suit after I pass I mean, out. I'll see the blueprints later. Really. Cross the Fumi and have him carry my weight. You tried to make me look like the bad guy! I mean, there's a reason why it's... Like but I then said, again... Ridiculous. We're trying to find contradictions here, assumingly, right? In the picture, the suspect is standing perfectly up if the person inside the suit was unconscious. There's no way they could stand up straight like that. Then the fortune-telling idiot is the culprit after all! No way! Wait, what? Okay, okay, let, let me read that message again. Hold on a minute. I think it was like around like near the end. Dress me up in that suit after I passed out. What the fuck does the blueprint say exactly? Actually, now that I think about it. Where's the blueprints? Here we go. Have the arms bent like this. The arms, but not the legs. Okay, that ha then that has to be it, right? You tried to make me look like a bad guy. As you can see in the picture, the suspect is standing the person inside the suit was unconscious. There's no way they could stand up straight like that. What? Shoot! Okay, if that's not it, then... Okay. Robo just blueprints. Right out. <laughs> then you just draped me across the Fumi and had him carry my weight. You tried to make me look like the bad guy. Okay, so her claim is it's possible for Tofumi to carry the Robo Justice costume with his unconscious body. He's standing perfectly upright. If the person inside the suit was unconscious, there's no way they could stand up straight like that. How is that not? Fortune telling idiot is the culprit after all. What the fuck? The blueprint states about the arms bending like that, right? So it's all standing up straight. I guess it doesn't say anything about standing up straight, but, uh... Am I, am, I, am I getting ahead of myself again? No way! That might be it, okay. Um, what's the other one? Robo Justice costume. Wait, what? Wait, hold on, what did Makoto say in his mind? Real quickly. Hurry, 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 hurry. Damn it. Okay, whatever. What do you say? If I remember right, Hina said... She said that she couldn't bend at the waist. Me if only we could have examined the fucking picture. 
Why can't we? Glasses? But no camera? That's the one thing I really want to see, if anything. Okay. After I passed out. <laughs> then you just draped me across the Fumi and had him carry my weight. You tried to make me look like the bad guy. Carry weight? Like I said, ridiculous. Assuming that the game is saying about contradictions and not perfectly upright evidence that supports these theories, inside the suit was unconscious. Then, yes, the hero's mention should not relate to the first statement. Oh my god, I'm really confused in this thing now. All right, maybe this could be a little bit difficult. All right, if I remember right, Hina said. She said that she can bend at the waist. That's the only information we get. But she can bend at the arms. So it has to be something with Fumi and had him carry my weight. With Robot Justice blueprints, right? But apparently the first one is wrong. Ridiculous. As you can see in the picture, the Papa is standing perfectly upright. If the person inside the suit was unconscious, that's not it either. Okay. So it's. You dressed me up in that suit after I passed out. <laughs> then you just draped me across the Fumi and had him carry my weight. Shoot. Whatever. Should I just reset my heart as well? In that suit after I passed out. Costume? Then you just draped me across the Fumi and had him carry my weight. You tried to make me look like the bad guy. Blueprints prove the bending arms. As you can see in the picture, the suspect is standing if the person inside the suit was unconscious. There's no way they could stand up. What the fuck? What's the difference between the blueprints and the cot? What the fuck? At least the blueprints was more believable because it bends the arms! Even if the person inside the suit were unconscious, they could still stand up like that. Okay. How does that relate to the costume though, not the blueprints? Because the costume, it's- Because that robo-justice suit had a certain characteristic. You totally can't bend at the waist. Seems like it's a pretty obvious oversight. Okay, so- Okay, okay never mind. Alright, so- But- Okay, so maybe I'm just mixing up my thing. So, okay, this proves I can at least stand up. There we go. Alright, I might be- Sorry about my complaining and all that shit. Uh, I'm just- yeah, this this mess this fucking they thing is just keeps making me confusing further. So, couldn't bend at the waist. so obviously it can always stand up. I'm not so sure that was a mistake. I think the suit was designed from the beginning to be used the way it was. <laughs> Celeste and Hifumi took the suit they'd specially designed and stuffed Hiro into it. That's all right, that makes sense. That, that makes sense. Right, it doesn't have timestamp, so it doesn't show exactly what time it was taking place. The okay. point of it all was to make us believe whoever was in the suit was to blame. <laughs> oh, she's getting crazy. Well, then, I suppose this is checkmate. Checkmate? <laughs> Oh boy, what happened to her accent all of a sudden? Celeste? Clearly, you want to cram me into your little guilty box. Well, there's one little problem. Have you already forgotten what Hifumi told us as he lay dying? Again, fabrication. He was an accomplice. Okay, now this, I'm really confused. How the hell are we going to prove this exactly? When we asked him who had attacked him, his answer was quite clear, was it not? He said, and I quote, Yasuhiro. In other words, Yasuhiro Hakakurei! Right, but my name isn't really Yasuhiro. It's actually Taro. Okay. The confusing statements don't make any sense. You're only making things more complicated. He did say Yasuhiro. But are we sure he was really pointing the finger at Hiro? What the hell are you talking about? I'll burn you alive! Kyoko, what do you mean by that? Do elaborate. Also, we've got 30 minutes. Oh my god, this has been a long segment. Holy shit. Alright then, I guess be right back for the next episode of Danganronpa. Stay tuned.